Stars shining bright above you Night breezes seem to whisper I love you Birds singing in the sycamore tree Dream a little dream of me Welcome Kinders, it's Jessica the Story Witch and this video is going to be a walkthrough of The Green Witch Tarot by Anne Mora and the art is by Kiwi Ostergaard Leonard and Leonard probably <laughs> and I wasn't going to do a walkthrough of this deck because I know that there are quite a few of them already up on YouTube but recently when I was doing one of my live streams for the Dark Moon somebody said that they would like me to do more walkthroughs and I asked on my Instagram and people were like yeah just do it and so I thought well actually I like watching lots of different people if I'm considering buying a deck then I do watch not just one person's walkthrough, I do watch a few people's walkthroughs because it's not just seeing the cards, I also like to hear people's perspectives and things on them so I thought, yeah, why am I being weird about this? <laughs> just do it. So this was actually bought for me as a gift from Ashley Adulting, you can go and check her channel, I'll link her down below. She has got this deck already and I'd seen her working with it and commented that it is really lovely and I it's been on my wish list and she actually sent it to me as a birthday gift which is super super sweet of her. I have already read a couple of Anne Mora's books in the past but I haven't used any of her tarot. I think she has made other decks but I'm maybe she hasn't I'm not sure about that 100%. This has been out a couple of years now. It's a Llewellyn published deck so it's kind of following the format of quite a few of these like everyday witch and my mind has gone blank to other ones that are like this but it's the kind of standard Llewellyn boxed up deck which comes with a book and it's really nicely done it does look really good and they're really nice to keep on your shelf like this as well it's got the magnetic closure and then when you open it up inside there's the book which is quite a good size and I have had a little look through but I haven't kind of gone too much into detail with these cards yet it's going to be my deck for the month in July which is probably this month because I don't know when I'll get this video edited and it's like the last day of June today when I'm filming this so yeah that is the book I thought I'd probably say when it came out actually won't it at the start let's have a look so yeah, so first published in 2015. So it's only been out a few years, but I've seen quite a lot of people work with this deck and speak very highly of it, actually. So I was very excited to be able to... I'm just kicking my bin. <laughs> to be able to share it with you guys as well. So those are the card backs. It it feels almost like a little bit Christmassy to me, that does, for some reason. I think maybe it's just the colours, the green and the red. And I suppose having the pentagram there as a star, it just, yeah, it seems very kind of Christmassy. So it might be a good deck to use. I think, though, the imagery is generally quite seasonal in here, as you would expect from a Green Witch tarot. So, yeah, I'll pop those to one side just while we have a little look at the cards. I have a little swig of tea. It's too hot to be drinking tea, really, but <laughs> I have to have a cup of tea. So... Yeah, let's have a little look through at these cards. I might try and get a little bit closer so that you can see better. How is that? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I'll try not to nudge the camera around too much. So it is kind of based on the traditional tarot system. You know, there are 78 cards and you can recognise the kind of the basis for the right away imagery in these cards, but they are renamed so there are different names for the majors and the suits have got different names and things as well so yeah so but apart from that I think it's going to be fairly straightforward to read with so let's just go through and have a little look at these cards so for, instead of the fool we have the green man which is obviously a very well-known image lots of oak tree leaves shooting out from his face there and underneath it looks like people dancing kind of playing music and celebrating and that does look almost like a spring to summer which you'd expect from it being the green man i'm not seeing that kind of step 
into the unknown that you might expect from the fool so we'd be interested and I haven't read what the book says about this card yet so I'll be interested to kind of dive a little bit deeper into what the thinking was behind the change in the imagery there there are obviously lots of things in that you could explore as in you know actually going on journeys and stuff but and it's got the little white dog actually from right away as well <laughs> but yeah I'm not seeing as that kind of leap of faith that you normally see the fool with so yeah interesting to kind of explore that and then instead of the magician we have the witch <laughs> which is fine by me lots of good symbols in there as well as you would expect similarly you know it's got she's got the the cauldron but also like the cup the pentagram the athame she's got all her kind of witchy things she's wearing a cord around her waist yeah so she's got all the kind of tools at her disposal as in the kind of traditional magician card so that definitely makes a lot of sense to me from that point of view and then the high priestess i'm not going to lift them up actually i think it's probably better if i just leave them there on the table so the high priestess and she is you know she's manifesting it's, it's the high priestess the same as in the right away smith deck and she's it looks like little snowdrops that she's throwing here and we've got the cat which is usually a kind of symbol of that higher intuition and the moon is this is the first card that we've seen that's at night time as well also still wearing the cord so you know you could almost see this as an evolution from the witch to the high priestess which is quite interesting these stones in the background as well almost look like human shapes so they could easily be ancestors as well kind of there in the background which i thought was a really i that's my favorite card that i've seen so far in this deck and then we have the Earth Mother, or the Empress, with her kind of horn of plenty, cornucopia, and all the ducks all around. It's just so much abundance. She's heavily, heavily pregnant. All the corn, she does look like a kind of corn goddess. And that is, I know not everybody sees the Empress like that because obviously it's not just about physical creativity, as in pregnancy and um, creativity with like gardening and things like that you know like kind of manifesting things in an earth way but also creative projects and things as well so you know there is that kind of that possibility also there especially I think with the apples because it's that kind of like apples of wisdom as well she's like sharing her wisdom and her gifts with the world so yeah so I, I, I'd like that and then we have the horned god for the Emperor. And in the Astara deck, actually, the Emperor is looks like a horned god as well. And he's probably a bit more my type than this guy. <laughs> but similarly, with the kind of tattoos, you know, you it is what you would expect from a hunter who is very accomplished and also has the the natives on his side. You know, he is leading... He's also got the bird just kind of cawing in his ear here. He is still receiving his uh, his information from that intuitive ear side as well, you know, that is there with the witch too. Interesting. And obviously the different animals have all got their own symbolism. I'm going to try not to make this video too long. I've only ever done one other... Oh, I suppose I've done two because I did the unicorn tarot one with my daughter. And I did a walkthrough of the celestial tarot and I think it was like three quarters of an hour. <laughs> so I'll try and keep this one a little bit shorter. So I'll not dwell on them too long. And then we have the high priest instead of the hierophant. That's interesting. So he's the kind of counterpart to the high priestess. And he is in the same place, it looks like, only in the daytime. And those cards really do mirror each other, which is interesting. So we've got the sun kind of shining down there and the moon shining down here. So we've got... That is an interesting take on the Hierophant because sometimes it's seen as kind of a bit more traditional knowledge as in institutions and almost like dogmatic thinking. Whereas this would be as a partner to this offers it more as as like an equal path I suppose to that intuitive mysterious path so that's an interesting take on that card sorry just have a little bit more tea <laughs> and 
the lady and the lord for the lovers which is nice the lady and the lord together and these are horned god as well and she is wearing a circlet around her head with the moon on it as well so we have got that kind of lunar that kind of coming together it's nice actually they don't look like a particularly young couple you know it is they look more a kind of working married couple as a it's like the kind of a divine feminine divine divine masculine elements kind of married together and very kind of well rooted and grounded so we've got the tree there in the background yeah that's cool she's also holding spears like he's got his bow but she has got spears which is interesting and then we have the battle wagon which is my card for this month for july <laughs> and again we've kind of got spears no horns this time but it is that kind of charging forward and really making progress you know the spears aren't pointing at anybody but there is that kind of that energy of just going for it which is really cool interesting and that is very much even though the horses are both white it is a kind of recognizable image from a Rider Waite Smith point of view as well wow okay so the strength card is actually my birth card number eight is my kind of life path number and this is a really interesting take on it so instead of strength we have the crone and there she is walking with a lion and the lion almost looks like a pet to her you know as if she's tamed him so long ago <laughs> that she already just one hand you know is already doing the work of taming the beast walking in her power wow that is a really really cool way of seeing strength i love that the holly king ah and these again look like another pair so these kind of characters are are kind of peering up it's nice seeing people of all ages in this deck as well especially women because often you'll see older men in the deck i know renee from um i almost said find you like them but she's the meadowlark mystic now which is a, such a cool name for a channel and she talks about that the kind of diversity of ages within decks is interesting to look at because lots of decks don't have very much diversity in age particularly for the women and here he is the holly king with the reindeer yeah, it doesn't, don't they look like a pair as well? I think these cards have got a lot of connections between them as well, which is going to be, make it really interesting in spreads and things to see how the interplay with these kind of pans out. And this time, instead of the, the High Priestess and the High Priest, we're like the night and day, we've now got the male at night and the female in the sunshine of the day. Really interesting. That kind of divine feminine, divine masculine flipped over a little bit which is really cool to see and then the wheel is the wheel of the year wheel of fortune and it is actually like a proper one you can spin oh and interesting look it has stopped on yule there and like i said these cars do have a kind of almost christmassy feel to them which is which is interesting yeah and the, there's lots of animal imagery in these which is going to be good to dive into a little bit deeper too and then we have the standing stone <laughs> which would be our justice card as you can see from the scales on there as well and we've got a labyrinth down here and a spider weaving a little web in the front of this card here and the daisies or the it could be chamomile they do look more like daisies though i wonder it'll probably say in the book within all these stones and it's got harm none which obviously is a kind of wiccan um well, it's advice rather than hard and fast rule. I'm not Wiccan, but I prefer to choose not to harm if I can. And yeah, those scales look pretty well balanced, actually, don't they? Hmm, interesting. I'll have to read what it says about that because they might have more insight on... Well, I'm sure it will have more insight into that card in the book. And then we have the Oak King, the Hanged Man, hanging upside down, drawing an infinity symbol within a circle which is really interesting we've got a little robin there and he almost looks like he's not he doesn't look like he's tied to anything he almost looks like he's kind of balancing on that thing he is making that kind of four that you would expect 
the kind of symbolic nature of this card. Yeah, and he is the Oak King. And he is, I suppose if you're looking from a seasonal point of view, the Oak King and the Holly King, they do kind of give way to each other as the year moves on. You can see some of this is perhaps the hint of autumn coming in here. Really interesting. Yeah, I think the seasonal play in these cards is really, really interesting. And then we have the Lord of Shadows, our death card. And that looks... We've got the well there, which is obviously a kind of descent into the underworld, you know, you can get down there. It also reminds me of the kind of Mother Holly uh, story as well, where you can kind of go down and visit Mother Holly and see what she is she might give you gifts if you are doing what she wants you to do. I hope this is lit enough. I'm going to try and move that light a little bit on and that's going to shine on it. And we've got a butterfly there showing that kind of transformational aspect of the card. And again, berries and things. And some people... Mm, it looks almost to me like this is somebody who has passed over and it looks like it's perhaps the, the wife or the mother and then we've got a man and a child kind of walking away from the well and they're kind of connecting through that. They've got a bucket of water from the well and it's almost showing to me, it's, it's making me quite emotional actually, that card. Like still kind of connecting to the underworld and connecting to our ancestors and those that we love even when they've passed over to the other side. Yeah. So we've kind of got something going off to the overworlds and something going to the underworlds. And that path, you know, still connected. Little drops of red here. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful death card. Wow, okay. And then the seed or sid, I'm never quite sure how you say this. I think this is like an Irish, it might even be shid, shi. <laughs> like Siobhan, you know, when it's S-I-O. But yeah, 14, which is temperance. And we've got kind of the elemental things there. Mistletoe hanging from the ceiling and fairies. It almost looks like, like if you didn't know what that was, you might even guess that this was the magician card. So that is another interesting pairing with the magician. Yeah, that's interesting. And there's all sorts of stuff going on here. You know, she's kind of mixing things up. I'm not seeing that kind of balance that you would expect normally. I suppose we have, we've got like the fire, the water, probably overall there is balance, but it's not that kind of like weighing out the two that you often see in a temperance card. Oh gosh, I haven't even got through the majors yet and we're almost on 20 minutes, sorry guys. And then 15, nature, which is the devil, usually. And here we have a man kind of looking at an empty trap and the bear behind him is kind of watching him and you don't get the feeling that he really knows that bear is there. So that is a really interesting take on this card. And then in the background there are very kind of fawnish looking creatures all cavorting. <laughs> he's not in he's not enjoying himself in this party, cavorting with the fawns. He's too busy looking at his empty trap. Yeah, that's interesting. Interesting as well, just having, it's quite a masculine card, unless you see the bear energy is maybe a feminine energy. Hmm. I'm liking this little like kind of light play and the fact that some of the cards are at night and some of the cards are at day, I think that's gonna play out really, really well in spreads. I'm excited to see how this, I haven't used this deck at all yet, apart from literally just drawing my card for the month from this. So yeah, that's going to be really interesting. And then 16, the tower is the wild hunt, which is when they come and take the souls and it's explosive. And that definitely does look like an explosive kind of card and a, you, you know, you're not going to get away too too lightly from this. Yeah, a lot of stormy energy there. Hmm, and a crow, which is interesting, a cock uh, cockerel, not a crow, almost like running away, which almost maxed to me a little bit of like biblical imagery, which is interesting. I will read the book. <laughs> I always do. I find sometimes when you're in groups on Facebook and some people will say, oh, don't read the book, just use your intuition. I'm always like, 
the creator has spent a long time making that book, you know, and really thinking about what imagery is going to be in these cards. Read the book, you know, that is just like an absolute no brainer, I think. Wow, that's a gorgeous star card. The star. Yeah. And that is kind of almost as you would expect from right away. I mean, obviously it's not. It does look quite different. But, you know, with the two vessels being poured out and the pool of water, it's a very, it's, you can tell it's a healing card. It is a really beautiful and light and hopeful card. You know, guidance. Higher guidance. And the moon. And Yeah, I love that card. The moon smiling down there and we can see the thing it almost looks like she's out foraging for things to be picked under the full moon and there's a fish just jumping out of that pool there and you can see the reflection of the of the moon in the water and that's really showing that kind of intuitive aspect of the card and that things are kind of in the depths that we can't always see but if you kind of tune in and see it you will get those little flashes of things coming out of the surface yeah really cool and then the sun, which the sun cards are usually horrible in decks. <laughs> they are though, aren't they? It's really like, there are decks with good sun cards, but often I find they're like, they're like a bit, ugh. especially if they've got like that baby and the smiling sun and everything. No. So in this deck, look, they've gone for a smiling moon and the, the sun is thankfully just the sun. <laughs> And it does look like a hot summer day. Summer days, you've got the the sunflowers there. The hay is being pitched. You know, it's 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 harvesting. It's full. You know, summer solstice maybe even because it looks like everyone's kind of gone off to have a good time instead of working, which is really lovely. And again, this bird imagery is continuing through the whole deck. And then, oh, okay, so following on from the sun, then we see the harbour. So in this card, it looks like everyone's kind of bogged off to have a good time. And then <laughs> we can actually see the harvest that they have gathered in here. And there are little gnomes or, yeah, I wonder what they are. Bogarts maybe here. And there's, it looks like probably cider they're drinking. And this is another, it's like a couple again in like an old fashioned house and stuff. Yeah, this deck is, is similar to Everyday Witch in some respects, but it's Everyday Witch is a much more modern feeling deck to me anyway. And this, with the imagery in this, they've tried to be a little bit more, like it looks old fashioned. It does look like, uh, I suppose like Middle Ages, I guess, from the style of the buildings and things, possibly like early Tudor Stuart times, although no, I think probably a little bit older than that. And wow, what a harvest. They've collected lots and lots and lots of things in there. And that would be judgment. So what is the judgment here? You know, where are we getting that judgment kind of... I usually see the judgment card as kind of being like a higher calling. And this is more... It seems to be more like reaping the rewards of your riches which you know the rewards of your hard work which is great i'm trying to look the reason i'm kind of picking this up is i'm trying to see in a little bit more detail what the woman in the background is is holding it just looks like more stuff but perhaps she has not got as much stuff maybe although i assumed first of all that they were kind of a couple but perhaps they're not maybe he has kind of reap this harvest and he's kind of been helped by the land sprites and things whereas she is maybe not i don't know interesting interesting or perhaps it's like if you work hard you will be rewarded which kind of is that judgment he sends to it as well again i'll have to dig into what the book says about that and then the world we've got the world tree and i'm loving the snake on there again and again we've got birdie looks like a heron on there and the world tree is, we've got all the seasons here, which it does feel like that. It feels like the card is, these, this deck is very much using the seasons as, as the elemental representations in these cards, which is, which is cool. Really cool. Yeah, I love that. That's my card for this year. For 2018. I'm really liking that. 
Okay, so I'm going to try and go a little bit faster through the miners. So pentacles, we've got um, just the regular suit of pentacles. And the ace there, you know, there's not a huge amount in the picture. There's no people in the picture. But it does kind of show this kind of earthy background. And a kind of like quite a, a big house from a um, Middle Ages kind of point of view. So perhaps that is also showing you the kind of possibilities that are there in these flowers here. I wonder if they're supposed to be daffodils. They do look a bit like daffodils. So that, that is also like a kind of possibility and manifestation kind of um, card. And then two of pentacles imagery we would expect. On there, oh, look at that fox sneaking in there. Three of Pentacles. Yeah, so the heron's got his fish. He's watching on as this young lad is getting his, uh, I think, a lyre or something. He looks like almost like a kind of druidic circle, doesn't it? Here, yeah, he does look like he's been taken on as some sort of apprentice, which you know makes sense for that. And then four of Pentacles. <laughs> This guy looks like he's taking these things down off the wall and hiding them before somebody comes in. So it is that kind of like holding on to your wealth, don't share kind of take on the Four of Pentacles, which is a bit of a shame, but maybe there is more to it than that when I look into it a little bit more deeply. And then five, she's left out in the cold here of this circle of warmth, but all these pentacles are dangling over her head and she's not even noticing her purse is empty, but she's not even noticing all this abundance around her. And a little lizard or salamander there. Six of pentacles and we've got... Ah, okay. So often this card is about kind of giving and sharing and about people um, receiving uh, gifts from others, you know, so you can see it from both sides of the coin. But what's interesting here, look, is this guy's holding his hand out for a handout, but behind his back he is he's got he doesn't need the handout he looks like he's got thing he's got stuff there already oh dice are in his hands actually that's interesting hmm so maybe it's about saying you know be careful who you share your resources with and you know it's a it's possible that gambling you know, there's that kind of gambling with with your resources. She, I think, though, it could be that it doesn't matter in a way, you know. You can share it with people even if they don't deserve it sometimes. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see what the book says about this, what's going on here. And then Seven of Pentacles, that kind of hard-working <laughs> apprentice who's carved out all his, all his lovely wooden pentacles and is oiling them up or shellacking them up. And then Eight, again, you know... This is him many, many years later, and he's still doing it. But this time, they're so beautiful, they're being hung on walls. <laughs> so, yeah, he's really kind of worked hard at his craft. He's got to that stage then. And then Nine of Pentacles, it's almost that kind of cycle of completion. We've got a whole family there. Lots of, uh, you know, it looks like they're doing quite well. Spinning. Nice children. Sorry, I just had to pause it quickly then because my husband popped his head in to say he's going out to try and catch some Pokemon. <laughs> yes, he is a grown man, but there we go. And Ten of Pentacles, yeah. So if we look at this and this, you know, this is still, this family is still kind of hard working and grafting and, and you know, they're enjoying themselves, they're happy. But then if you look at this here now, you know, they've really manifested this massive amount of abundance here taking it next level, you know. And this maybe even is the granddaughter. We're looking at these people aging, or perhaps this could be this could be the son, maybe, and this could be the daughter of this guy. Interesting. And a kingfisher in there. And then the page of pentacles. What's he doing? Looks like he's kind of doing his own thing. Instead of kind of following the instructions, he's actually just kind of learning and trying and trying out new stuff which is kind of innovative which is cool really cool way of seeing this card i'm not sure if that's a fox or if it might be a dog yeah cool the detail in these you know the tools and things in the backgrounds and 
there's so much in these cards it's going to be really cool to dive into them and it's not actually the sort of imagery that I normally would like because it's a little bit over the top for me I like a little bit more it's a little bit too kind of children's book illustrative normally from what I would like but actually I do like it weirdly so yeah I'm intrigued to see how these are going to read and then the knight of pentacles is a girl it looks like which is a lovely I love it when they kind of mix up that whole thing and she looks like she's going somewhere with a bunch of flowers to give somebody this horse doesn't exactly look like he's <laughs> charging into battle anytime soon which is what you'd expect I guess from the pentacles it's more that kind of plodding you know sure and steady wins the race and yeah that's that is lovely you know you will get you'll get there doing it like that and then the Queen of Pentacles, and she is a little bit more elderly as well, looking up into things. She looks very happy with all the things she's kind of collected. She looks like she's been harvesting. looks like walnuts from this tree. And now she's just kind of having a little rest, thinking, yeah, I've done a really good job. <laughs> and the King of Pentacles, he looks like he's been enjoying himself and enjoying maybe himself a little bit too much, judging by that belly. But he looks very happy and kind of relaxed, which is lovely. Yeah, what are they? Which flowers are they? I don't recognise them. They are some kind of trumpet-shaped flower. They do look familiar, but I can't think what they're called. And yeah, we've got the kind of bull off in the background who's also just kind of grazing. And this guy looks like he'd be more in keen of grazing rather than actually, like, impregnating any cows. <laughs> So yeah, it's a very kind of laid back energy for the King of Pentacles rather than a kind of, you know, rather than this. Hmm. Which I do kind of see the King of Pentacles having this potential as well. And then Ace of Athames. So instead of swords, we've got Athames, uh, which is very Llewellyn. <laughs> and we've got the dandelion seeds kind of shooting off, you know, it's that kind of mental energy, air energy, Things are being started. Seeds are being cast. And then the two, they pop their athames in there while they are kind of using their sides. But this guy looks like he's just kind of chilling out while the other guy, well, neither of them are doing a lot of work. But there is plenty of uh, work to be done. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're deciding the best way about how to do it. I guess is probably what's going on because that's the kind of two of pentacle, uh, two of swords, isn't it? And then three of Athames. Hmm. So I don't immediately get the kind of sad. I, I mean, it does look a little bit sad, but she doesn't look completely heartbroken. It looks almost more like she's maybe renovating this. She's going, maybe going back to this. Ah, okay. So perhaps her relationship is finished. She's going back to her old place and she's going to have to kind of make a fresh start. But that swan's there, keeping an eye on her. And then the four of swords. Hmm. So, so far, I'm liking how this is not putting the the athames, the swords, on a kind of negative slant. It almost looks more like he's just having a little chill, thinking about what he's going to do, rather than being stressed out about it. So that is a cool... You know, that doesn't look particularly... He looks like... He doesn't look particularly stressed out there. He looks... I, you know, I wouldn't mind doing that. And then five of athames. I don't like the way he's holding them by the blades. That can't be... Can't be good, can it? Five of Swords is a bit of a weird energy of a card, you know, a bit uh, aggressive sometimes. It almost looks like he's kind of turning it in on himself a little bit. Peacock in the background. This guy looks like he's obviously a bit more well-to-do than this guy. Maybe he's choosing one. Looks like perhaps he's picking one. Picking an idea to go with, perhaps. Hmm almost looks like a kind of boss, you know, and they and somebody who is an underling. Kind of pitching your ideas and hoping that somebody's gonna take you up on them. Yeah. 
doesn't almost feel like a kind of worky context to me. And then six of athames, that's a really kind of right away image. Instead of, but instead of going that way, they're actually coming here. So we're on the land that they're coming to, which is an interesting little twist on it. Hmm, taking your stuff, but going off to a new place. And the seven. <laughs> she does not look happy. <laughs> And this is a card that does often come out if people are being less than honest in, especially in relationships, cheating and things like that. And you know, we've got a skunk in here. Or is it a badger? I think it's a skunk, just looking at the tail. And you know, he's got his catch, but what else has he been catching? She certainly does not look impressed. Yeah, and he's still not looking at her. He's still got his eyes somewhere else. And the eight, so that is a very, oh gosh, I hope she doesn't stand on that hedgehog. But she's finding her way out. She, at least she looks like she's moving, you know. She's not as trapped as you would sometimes expect. There's also lots of abundance here as well that she is, uh, some wisdom that is could be hers when she gets herself out. And the nine, which is a very difficult card with... You know, it's like, oh, look at the bat just outside the window there. It's almost like, you know, there are, look at, looking outside of your current situation, there is going to be a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel, I guess. And then the ten. Oh. I wonder if one of their, uh, one of their siblings has ended up in that pot. It is... You know, it's finished. At least it's finished, and you can kind of move on with things. And yeah, it's it's a sad card. And then we have the page. Oh wow, she looks like she's gonna do some serious stuff, doesn't she? Look at that owl there, just perching there, watching her, or kind of watching us really, as we watch. She's like. Don't you dare do anything to her. She is. She's finding her way. She's got her spell book there. And then the knight. Oh, and he just looks like he's kind of... Looks pretty happy. He looks more like he's off to have a good time rather than charging into battle. As the badger looks on. And then the queen. Using her athame to cut flowers. She's got a lot of other little tools there as well. And the bird just outside the window. That's interesting. She's very, uh, the queens have not been so still, although the, the Queen of Pentacles was sitting on a bench. She, they are, they do seem like actual real people rather than being just kind of on thrones and stuff. So yeah, she's got some orchids there. She doesn't look too happy, does she? And then the King of Athames, is doing his work really <laughs> getting on with doing all the work and things and look at all these scrolls and papers it looks like it's like oh my gosh i've got so much paperwork it's weird this deck is this this suit has been quite a worky seeming suit to me which normally it's ones that have seemed worky to me whereas in this deck so far from what i've seen anyway the athames seem very much like work related issues and work stresses and things Interesting. So we've got Ace of Wands and we've got these lovely cherries here and, you know, gorgeous possibility. Yeah. And the two, she's waving us off <laughs> as we start on our adventure. She looks quite happy. She's like, go to market, get plenty of money and come back. And then the three, now this, that's the difference between the two and the three. You know, this is like going to market and coming back the same day or possibly the next day whereas the three of wands is like shall I go on a really massive adventure hmm I've done that now I'm ready for this or maybe I'm thinking about it and then four of wands hmm they almost look like they're flirting there don't they <laughs> It's like, whoa, check out all this. They're going to be having some cider and having a good time later, I think, judging by that little uh, little look. He's not looking at what he's pouring. He's just looking at her. Yeah, so I'm seeing that almost as a kind of saucy 
card. <laughs> and then five of wands. Are they using the wands as almost like, yeah, it looks almost like a scene from Harry Potter that. <laughs> so instead of fighting, they are spell casting. They're still kids, you know, they're kind of finding their way of what they're supposed to be doing. We've got a little ant there, look, working hard in the background. So the ones who work hard are going to be the ones who actually make something of themselves, which I think is what that card is saying. Like I said, I haven't read the book yet at all, but I will be obviously studying the book as well. And that's why I find it so cool having it as a daily draw deck, because you can really dive into the card and and sometimes cards will come out more than once as well so you get a good chance to to really connect with the card and then six of wands so you've got soldiers this side and then just like kind of peasants this side but they all look pretty you know happy about what's going on <laughs> well we don't know what these look like maybe they're not so happy but we don't know because we can't see the other side but usually six of wands is a kind of celebratory everyone's happy it's almost like kind of on there, it looks more like the natural order is kind of everyone's happy with it because it's organised rather than it being a kind of marriage-y type celebration, which is interesting. Different kind of perspective on it. Seven of Wands. Mm, she looks like she's going to sneak a little wand there, doesn't she? It's normally that Seven of Swords, which is the stealing. Oh, I wonder if this deck is the other way round. That would make sense. You know, like sometimes they switch the wands and the swords and it's, um, you know, so instead of air and fire, we've got them switched around. That would be interesting. Although there's a lot of fire going on in these, in these cards as well. I'll have to read what they were. But that's definitely more four of wands than four of swords so i think it can't be but that card definitely looks to me more like what i would expect from the seven of swords rather than seven of wands yeah interesting i do like how the deck those suits are being disrupted slightly though it is giving different possibilities for the readings of the cards and then eight of wands she's taken her things all with her her wands she looks like she's pressing flowers, maybe. I'm not sure exactly what she's doing there. She looks quite happy, though, cracking on with it. And this little blue tit has come to watch, or maybe a great tit has come to watch as well. And usually that card is like kind of everything's happening a bit too fast, but this looks almost the opposite of that. It looks like it's just she's kind of just taking herself off and is concentrating in her own little world, which is a totally different interpretation of that card. Nine of Wands. <laughs> he looks like he doesn't know which one to pick up, doesn't he? He's not taking any notice of this little sprite uh, there or the mole bringing some wisdom from underneath either. He's like, oh God, I don't know what to do. What shall I do? <laughs> he looks out of his depth, doesn't he? Okay, and then Ten of Wands, that is what we would expect really, kind of carrying this bundle all the way to up to here to celebrate. That looks like the stone circle that we saw in the some of the majors cards as well. And this little squirrel there, just kind of watching. He's like, I just carry the nuts I can carry and keep storing them away. I don't carry them all in one go. Yeah, it looks like she's come a very long way. And then we've got our page. <laughs> doing a bit of magic with their wand. The pages in this deck have been lush, haven't they? They're so, so magical. You know, they look like kind of just ordinary kids, but no, it's nice seeing the children being given more of a role in the decks as well. You know, they aren't, they are children. And then all the Knight of Wands look like, looks like she's setting off. Oh, she's going to the village. I thought she might have been going off somewhere else or maybe she's going to a different village. I don't know, but she looks beautiful. I wonder what she's going there to do. And then the Queen of Wands, lovely. She's just kind of sat there like, yep, I can do whatever you ask me to do. <laughs> I got whatever it is that you need. It looks like some gorgeous hyacinth there as well, and a bird again. Birds all the way through this deck. And then the King of Wands, looking very happy with his wand. <laughs> 
and a little ferret maybe at his feet and he also looks very happy as well and kind of just satisfied with the knowledge that he has everything that he needs hmm. and then we've got chalices the cups so uh, you know that's what we'd expect and the two um, oh, okay, so two, normally, oh, okay, so they've got two, which is kind of like that kind of male-female connection, and sometimes it's about balance and things as well, whereas the three is more about kind of friendship, camaraderie, and supporting each other. That's nice. It hasn't been at all ethnically diverse, this deck, but I suppose perhaps that has been because they are going for a kind of a very set time period in what looks like Europe so I guess that would be more accurate although I think not not wholly accurate so yeah I wish people would kind of think about that a little bit more sometimes when they are doing their decks and then four of chalices she looks severely pissed doesn't she it almost looks like this girl has maybe stolen her boyfriend <laughs> Yeah. Or she's like, she's so beautiful and looks like she's got a sort of nice place here. And yet all she wants is that, that that other girl, that other woman has got out of there. Yeah, not seeing, not counting your, not appreciating your blessings, total lack of gratitude, you know, and an acknowledgement of the wonderful things you've got. And then five of chalices, oh, she's just pouring it out onto the ground. She's just pouring it all out. Look at all these berries and everything. It's like, hmm. It, that's a weird, a weird thing to be doing there. Unless she's doing it for some sort of magical purpose. That tree looks really weird as well. Really kind of gnarled up, doesn't it? We've got the spiral again and her bag. It's like, right, that's it. I'm off. I'm taking my empty chalices and I am gone. <laughs> oh, look at these kids here. Six of chalices and they've had a lovely tea party and now they're walking back home. <laughs> looking very happy, looking at each other with their bird and their bunch of flowers. It is nice seeing the children in this deck. Seven of chalices, ooh, she does really look tempted there, doesn't she? And the sprites are pulling her hair. They're like, come on now, don't be stupid. <laughs> Don't get drunk and uh, make bad decisions. Hmm. And then the eight. Yeah, he's kind of lost touch with with his emotions there. You know, he's got all the kind of, he knows it all. And he's got the, you know, he's got his wand as well. He's got his scrolls and his wand. But he is not connected. Somebody who's not connected with their emotions rather than the kind of like heartbroken -y one you might expect. And then nine, ah, oh, that's nice. So she's there reading her crystal ball, all sort of saying, I know, I've got this all here going on. <laughs> and the ladybird there as well. I love that. And the 10 of chalices, oh, that's lovely. Really lovely. And the otter there in the water. And that, you know, is what we'd expect. Ten, a kind of happy, um, connected relationship. And the page of chalices. Oh, look, there she is, all dreamy and creative. She's gone out to go and paint a beautiful river. Or perhaps she's going to paint these flowers here. But she's gone to a lovely setting to do it. And then the knight of chalices, he's offering his love offering his cup up to anyone who's there. Maybe not anyone, maybe he's got somebody specific in mind. And there's that stone circle, almost like that set up for like a wedding, which is lovely. Oh, look at the queen of chalices sitting there in the sea. Oh, that's a lovely queen of cups. I like that a lot. And the crab there, very kind of cancerian, nurturing, centered emotionally articulate mm. and then the king of chalices i don't think they've been that kind to the kings in this deck 
uh, he also, well, you know, he's he's happy. He's really happy. He's enjoying it. He's got the bee. It's like he's got all the sort of honey and sweetness of life, and he knows it, and he's appreciative of it. You know, he is. He's like, yes, look at all my wonderful, wonderful stuff. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. Hopefully it's not too long. It is going to be too long. I'm so sorry about the length of the video. I don't know how people manage to do flip through, walk through type things in a shorter space of time. Maybe they're not as kind of verbal diary-ish as I am. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know if you would like me to do more lengthy walkthroughs. <laughs> warmest, warmest blessings, and I will see you very soon. Da -da 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 -da. Ah.